This is the OTB Network. Welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. This program is brought to you by Parting Glass Racing. We've had a nice weekend of racing, some solid racing all across the country, and of course, New York Showcase Day on Saturday at Belmont. But before we head back to New York, we'll start things out with Monmouth Park Stakes feature on Saturday afternoon. It was the Seton Hall University for two-year-olds at a mile. And they're all in line. They're racing in the Seton Hall University Stakes. Curlinello, the favorite, is out last. It's Sweet Ducky up to grab the early lead. Silent Tap is right alongside. Printing Press caught wide into the turn. Curlinello is drafting in behind horses. Then Taylor's Wise Lion along the rail. And in the back of the pack is Gee, five lengths off the lead. Up top, it is Sweet Ducky, Silent Tap, and Printing Press going at it. Now Printing Press and Sweet Ducky are going to kick on, and Silent Tap will sit third. The first quarter, 24-1. and one. Curlinello, fourth and taken to the outside part of the track. He's four lengths off the lead and three clear of Gee and Taylor's Wise Lion. Less than five furlongs to go here. Printing press on the outside. Near the rail, Sweet Ducky together on the lead. Two and a half back to Silent Tap and Curlinello. Another four to Gee. Taylor's Wise Lion last at the half mile pole. That half was 48 seconds flat. Into the turn. Sweet Ducky and Printing Press. These two continue to go at it on the lead. Curlinello and Silent Tapper getting closer though. Curlinello's going to circle up on the outside. Silent Tap will try his luck along the rail. And they've left Gee behind. Taylor's Wise Lion trails. Three quarters in one, 12 and four. They're into the stretch. And it is Sweet Ducky who kicks away now. Sweet Ducky's opened up a four length lead. Then Silent Tap Printing Press and Curlinello on the outside. Coming down to the 16th pole, Joe Bravo and Sweet Ducky are all alone in the Seton Hall University Stakes. The win wrapped up. The race is for second. Looks like Curlinello got there outside of Printing Press. Silent Tap fourth. Sweet Ducky wins two in a row. A very nice effort for this youngster who is now three for four as he picks up the victory over Curlinello, who those two had run one two last time out in the Garden State Stakes. Printing Press shows the way early and settles for third. The winner of Sweet Ducky is a Dark Bay or Brown Colt, a son of Pulpit from Storm's Darling by Storm Boot. Bred in Kentucky by the TDV Development Corporation, owned by George and Laurie Hall, trained by Kelly Breen, and ridden victory by Joe Bravo. Sweet Ducky covers the mile of 138.62. We'll stay in the Mid-Atlantic, head to Delaware Park for their stakes feature on Saturday afternoon. Phillies and mares sprinting in the sweet and sassy. And they're off in the sweet and sassy. Love that dance breaks well. Jahan toward the outside, Seawind. If not for less down toward the inside, we've got four across the track. Vuve rushing up with the rail quickly into contention. Battling for that lead down the back stretch. If not for Lust, Vuve now with the rail, challenging that one. Love that dance is right there between horses. Jahan up on the outside. Mindy Sue settles nicely in that fifth spot and right alongside that Sea Wind as they pass the half mile marker opening quarter. 22 flat as they race into the turn. Vuve with the rail. Right alongside, if not for Lust, Jahan is moving up there three wide. Love that dance. The favorite is right there between horses. You can throw a handkerchief over the first four. Then comes Mindy Sue and Sea Wind. It's wide open as they race around the bend. Vuve between horses. Love that dance. Jahan up on the outside. Those three are head to head to head. Mindy Sue behind that group. Top of the stretch. Jahan circles up on the far outside. Now to the front by half a length. Vuve trying to battle back. Love that dance. Followed by Mindy Sue and Sea Wind. Jahan on the outside. Love that dance under a drive. Vuve is trying to come back with the rail. Those three still with a shock. Between horses, the favorite. Love that dance is now showing her class. And love that dance begins to edge away. Love that dance. Elvis here wins it by two. Tight for second ahead, Bob. Either Jahan on the outside or Vuve toward the inside. Mindy Sue got fourth.
Love that dance. Picking up the victory is the heavy odds on choice two and a quarter lengths the better of Jihan with Vuvay back in the third spot after showing the early way. The winner, love that dance, now 8 for 23 lifetime, has really had a fairly solid campaign, won the 11 North two races back at Monmouth Park against some fairly good sprinting fillies. Love that dance is a chestnut filly, a daughter of Not for Love from Broad Exchange by Broad Brush. Bred in New Jersey by John Petrini and owned by the breeder, trained by Benjamin Perkins Jr. and ridden the victory by Elvis Trujillo. Love that dance covers the six and one ten point three zero. We will head now to Keeneland where their fall meeting continues. We'll head back to last week's Thursday stakes feature, older horses going long on the grass in the Sycamore. No, 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 no. And they're off in the Sycamore Stakes. Precious Passion bounds right out for the lead, as expected. Taja Weed, they're up on the far outside, then Free Fighter back toward the inside. Lemonade Kid, who goes fourth up on the extreme outside toward the center of the course, moving into the first of three turns. Precious Passion has the lead by two lengths. Taja Weed goes second by two. Lemonade Kid goes third by a length around the far turn the first time. And then Free Fighter down toward the inside in the fourth position. Lindian's Hero, fifth in between horses as they move toward the top of the stretch. And then Musketeer, who stays toward the center of the course, 10 lengths off the early lead. Solitaire next between horses, year round to his outside. Southern Anthem back toward the inside. Yates Black Cat in behind that pair. Then a gap of three back to Brass Hat next to last. And Razif is the trailer. Precious Passion, still with a lap remaining, opens up on a five length lead to Taja Weed, second by six. And then Lemonade Kid is third, a length and a half, followed by Free Fighter in fourth, just to the inside of Linian's Hero. The first quarter in 24 and one, the opening half mile 48 and one fifth seconds. Precious Passion sets the tempo. Leads it by six lengths to Taja Weed, second by five. Lemonade Kid goes third, moving into the second of three turns. And then Free Fighter, fourth toward the inside. Lindian's Hero, fifth on the outside of that one, followed by Musketeer, Solitaire. You're round to the far outside. Southern Anthem is next toward the inside of Yates Black Cat. Razif is next to last. And Brass Hat is the trailer, twelfth and last after six furlongs in 113. Precious Passion has the lead, six lengths to the good. Up the back stretch, Taja Weed, second by five to Lemonade Kid, who goes third by a length and a half. Then Free Fighter in fourth. Linian's Hero fifth in between horses. Musketeer toward the center of the course is sixth by three parts of a length. And then Solitaire back toward the inside. Yates Black Cat is next in between horses. Your round has running to do. Caught toward the far outside. Better than a dozen lengths from the front. Then Southern Anthem Brass Hat. And Razif who is last. Into the far turn. Taj Weed trying to chase down leader Precious Passion. The lead down to two and a half lengths. Precious Passion on top. Taj Weed two lengths away now in second. A length and a half around the far turn. And then Lemonade kid on the outside. Free Fighter down toward the inside in fourth. Yates Black Cat is fifth. Musketeer four wide around the far turn. Still six lengths off the lead. Solitaire looks toward the inside. Quarter mile to come. Precious Passion to get. Leading Taja Weed a length and a half. Then Lemonade Kid. Free Fighter toward the inside. Musketeer toward the outside along with Southern Anthem. Brass Hat in behind horses. Still five lengths off the lead. Up front Taja Weed the leader now. Southern Anthem and Musketeer coming from the outside. Precious Passion fights on toward the inside. But Musketeer Southern Anthem and Brass Hat coming forward. Musketeer short lead, Southern Anthem, then Brass Hat far outside. How about Brass Hat? Nine years of age, $2 million winner, and he takes the grade three Sycamore Stakes for Calvin Borrell. Good old Brass Hat. Nice to see this guy getting back to uh, winning form. He has been a solid campaigner for many years, now 10 for 39 lifetime. Coming in off of a second in the Cliff Williams last time out at Ellis behind a repeat winner, Tour Allure. So he's been in good form, racing against solid horses, rallies strongly to win by a length over Southern Anthem. It was a nose back to Musketeer in the third spot. Brass Hat is a nine-year-old bay gelding, a son of prize from Brassy by Dixie Brass, bred in Kentucky by Fred F. Bradley, owned by the breeder, trained by Buff Bradley, and ridden to victory by Calvin Burrell. Brass Hat covers the mile and a half in 230.73. We'll head right back to Keeneland for the Friday stakes feature, this time the Pin Oak Valley View, three-year-old fillies on the turf. They're at the post.
and they're off in the Pin Oak Valley view. Crescenda broke alertly, and so did Jenny So Great. And here comes Ice Mist from the center of the course. Jenny So Great, Blackwell toward the inside. Ice Mist moving by both of them from the outside as they head for the first turn. Crescenda backs away now from that battle up front and will settle back into the fourth position. No explaining fifth on her outside. And then Silent Candy is sixth down toward the inside into the first turn. Ice Mist will set the tempo, leads it against the rail by two lengths around the turn. Blackwell second by a length and a half. Crescendo third, a half length. No explaining fourth up on the outside. Jenny So Great goes fifth. Persuading is sixth. Millennia seventh onto the back stretch. Silent Candy gets shuffled back to eighth. Gap of three to end the slips. Who is in ninth? Fugitive Angel is tenth. Then Neon Light eleventh. Camina Dora is twelfth and last for the move up the back stretch. Twenty-three and three-fifth seconds. The time for the opening quarter. Ice Mist leads the field by two and a half lengths through a half in 48 seconds flat. Ice Mist leads it. Blackwell second, a length and a half. Crescendo goes third, three parts of a length. No explaining is fourth up on the outside. Jenny So Great fifth, just inside of Persuading sixth. Silent Candy seventh. Then Millennia, who's eighth on the outside, still running nine lengths off the lead. Fugitive Angel angles wide behind that one. Then in the slips, Neon Light next to last. Kamita Dora is the trailer. They're coming to the quarter pole, and Ice Mist has the lead. Ice Mist by three lengths off the far turn. No explaining. Trying to gear up from the outside, going from fourth to third to second, just outside of Crescenda. Blackwell shuffled to fourth. No explaining, and Fugitive Angel coming also on the outside, but they've got to get Ice Mist past the eighth pole. Ice Mist leads it by two and a half. Fugitive Angel is running on powerfully from the outside. Final furlong of the Pin Oak Valley View. Fugitive Angel, Rosie Napravnik from off the pace to take the feature. Fugitive Angel wins it. Ice Mist with a big run was second. Then no explaining was third. Close for fourth. The time, one minute, 44 seconds. Fugitive Angel picking up the win here. A nice effort by this filly who's now won four in a row. She won a turf maiden special at Colonial and a pair of stakes races in Pennsylvania. One on the main track, one on the uh, tapita surface at, uh, at Presque Isle last time out. Picks up the victory, a very nice effort from well back off the pace, sweeping to win, going away by almost four over ice. Missed a long shot in from Kentucky Downs. Woodbine shipper, no explaining, completes the order of the top three. The winner, Fugitive Angel, is a bay daughter of Alphabet Soup from Screening by Unbridled. Bred in Pennsylvania by George Strawbridge, Ju Strawbridge Jr. and owned by Mr. Strawbridge's Augustan Stable, trained by Jonathan Shepard and ridden victory by Anna Napravnik, Fugitive Angel covers the mile in a 16th and 144.10. Next up, we'll head right back to Keeneland. The Saturday stakes feature three-year-old fillies sprinting in the Lexus Raven Run. And they're off in the Lexus Raven Run. Decelerator broke alertly from the outside. Tremendamente Loca has speed. Hilda's Passion up close and Platinum Exchange down toward the inside. Hilda's Passion and Platinum Exchange side by side for the early lead. Decelerator joins them in third. Out in the center of the racetrack. Gap of two. Tremendamente Loca fourth. Chantilly Nela goes fifth between horses. Kitty and a tizzy sixth up on the outside. Katie now seventh against the rail. Negligé goes eighth. Red Hot Buddha is in ninth. Distorted Promise tenth down toward the inside. Beautician is eleventh. Speedy Spice is 12th into the far turn and much rejoicing is 13th at last 22 and two fifth seconds for the opening quarter Hilda's Passion has the lead three parts of a length into the far turn decelerator second by a neck platinum exchange third three parts of a length kitty and a tizzy fourth up on the outside Chantilly Nela fifth and running five lengths off the lead negligee sixth in between horses speedy spice angles wide and seventh outside of red hot Buddha then tremendamente loca beautician still 10 lengths off the lead quarter mile to come Hilda's Passion has a narrow lead off the turn decelerator then Kitty and a tizzy third on the outside. Chantilly Nela fourth and looking toward the inside. Hilda's Passion chased by Decelerator. Kitty and a tizzy. Then Tremendamente Loca and Chantilly Nela. Final furlong of the Lexus Raven run. Decelerator coming after Hilda's Passion. And then Chantilly Nela, Tremendamente Loca. Also Kitty and a tizzy. But Hilda's Passion and Corey Lannery fight off every challenge to take the Lexus Raven run. Decelerator was home second. Tremendamente Loca third. One minute 21 and one fifth seconds. Thank you. 
Hilda's Passion picks up the victory. A nice effort off of a uh, win last time out in Saratoga. She won the restricted Bennington Stakes that afternoon. Interestingly enough, running third was Decelerator, who finished in the second spot here at 73 to 1. If you liked Hilda's Passion, why not take a look at Decelerator at that kind of a price? It set up an $820 exacta payoff. Tremendamente Loca completes the order of the top three at 42 to 1. The winner, Hilda's Passion, is a Bay Philly, a daughter of Canadian Frontier from Executricker by El Prado, bred in Kentucky by Mr. and Mrs. Theodore Cooster, owned by Starlight Partners and C.E. Glasscock, trained by Todd Fletcher and ridden to victory by Corey Lannery. Hilda's Passion covers the seven furlongs in 121.38. We will wrap up the week at, Chur at uh, Churchill Downs at Keeneland with the Sunday Stakes feature, Older Phillies and Mares, going long in the Rudin Riddle, Riddle Dowager on turf. And the Roth and the Rude and Riddle Dowager Stakes. Speakeasy Gal broke alertly from the far outside. Casablanca Smile has some early speed as well. Followed by Restless Soul down toward the inside. Then Sweet and Flawless, Diane and Emerald Beach who drops out to the back as the field moves into that far turn for the first time. Speakeasy Gal from the far outside starting spot has the advantage. Now starts to drop down toward the inside and leads it by a length and a half. Casablanca Smile just off the leader's flank now. Moves up a closer second from the outside. Then a gap of three more lengths back to Restless Soul who's third by a length. Sweet and Flawless goes fourth by three. Emerald Beach moves up one spot from last, and Diane is now the trailer, and here comes Casablanca Smile moving up into the stretch the first time to take the lead. The opening quarter went in 27 and three-fifth seconds. Still with a lap to go here, this 12 furlong journey, and it is Casablanca Smile leading it by two lengths, followed by Speakeasy Gal, who's second a length and a half. Restless Soul goes third a length, followed by Sweet and Flawless, fourth up on the outside. Then a gap of four more lengths back to Emerald Beach, and Diane, who is the trailer, 53 and 1 was the time for that first half mile. And Casablanca Smile and Javier Castellano show the way into the second of three turns. Casablanca Smile leads it by two lengths to Speakeasy Gal, who travels in the second spot by two and a half. Restless Soul third by two. Then Sweet and Flawless, who's fourth against the rail by three. Then Emerald Beach next to last. And Diane is the trailer for the final move up the back stretch after six furlongs and 118 and four. So halfway home in the Root and Riddle Dowager, and the leader is still Casablanca Smile by two lengths to Speakeasy Gal. Restless Soul moves in a closer third down toward the inside. Restless Soul starts moving forward now to challenge for the second spot. Gap of two to Sweet and Flawless, two and a half more back to Emerald Beach. And Diane is last as they head into the far turn. They got the mile in a minute, 45 seconds. Casablanca Smile chased by Speakeasy Gal, a length separating the top two. Restless Soul is third down toward the inside, two lengths off the lead. Then Sweet and Flawless midway on the far turn in fourth. Emerald Beach fifth, Diane sixth and last, just over a quarter mile to come. Casablanca Smile is the leader as they turn for home by a length. Speakeasy Gal to the outside from second, a length and a half. And Restless Soul still third toward the inside. Sweet and Flawless, Emerald Beach, Diane at the back. They're coming to the eighth pole. Casablanca Smile chased through the stretch by Speakeasy Gal and Casablanca Smile, who has controlled the pace, just kicks on to the final furlong of the Rude and Riddle Dowager Stakes. It is all Casablanca Smile and Javier Castellano just to crush the field. The battle's for second as Sweet and Flawless moves by for the second spot, but Casablanca Smile has won it. Sweet and Flawless was home second. Speakeasy Gal was third, and Diane finished fourth in two minutes, 33 and three-fifth seconds. Casablanca Smile picks up the victory. She had been second in a couple of most recent starts, including a nice effort up here to Kirtana in the Glens Falls. She also was second to eventual grade one stakes place changing skies. In the Weya at Saratoga, here she goes off as the favorite and simply gallops them into the ground, scoring by seven over Sweet and Flawless with the second choice in the betting Speakeasy Gal back in third. Casablanca Smile is a Bay Philly, a daughter of Ocean Terrace from Parisa by Sadler's Congress, bred in Chile by RSL Sheikh and owned by the Green Hills Farm, trained by Shug Gehi and ridden a victory by Javier Castellano. Casablanca Smile covers the mile and a half in 233.70. We'll pause for a brief message. When we return, we've got more great stakes racing action from around the country. Please stay with us.
Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We will continue now north of the border at Woodbine. Last Wednesday, they had a pretty nice looking stake for three year old fillies going six and a half furlongs, the Ruling Angel Stakes. They're off in the Ruling Angel Stakes, and Sharp Secretary broke sharp and immediately takes the lead. Barracks Road to the outside, then Sue Lee and Manx misses join the fray to the inside as they come onto the main track. And fantastic Cousin Sugar again, second to last, first with class trails. And it's Sharp Secretary along the backstretch, an aggressive Manx miss and Emil Ram Sammy come on at the rail and do battle with Sharp Secretary in the run up the backstretch. And Barracks Road lies in waiting just in behind them in third. Then we have Fantastic Cousin is a close fourth. Sugar again and first with class. Suey starts to gain ground from just off the pace, just under three eighths to go in the Ruling Angel. And it is Sharp Secretary. The Duchess winner has the lead. The Ontario Colleen winner. Barracks Road presses on from the outside. Manx Miss trying to keep up toward the rail. And Fantastic Cousin Sue Lee. Sugar again is in behind horses. And they're into the stretch. And it's Barracks Road with a narrow lead now. Sharp Secretary battles on bravely. Sugar again is coming hard. As is Fantastic Cousin. Sugar again on the outside. And Barracks Road in a desperate struggle that went to Sugar again. Sugar again wins the Ruling Angel to Barracks Road. And Fantastic Cousin with Sharp Secretary fourth. Sugar again picks up the victory, and she's kind of an interesting horse. She had been running at Woodbine throughout the course of this year, but she looks like a filly that might be on the improve in the late portion of her three-year-old campaign, and one to keep your eye on if, in fact, they decide to send her south of the border, either for a winter campaign in Florida or possibly hold her out for a spring campaign next year at Keeneland because she has done very well while running on the poly track. She scores by a half over Barracks Road with Fantastic Cousin in the third spot off of a solid second last time out against older allowance company sugar again drops in with three-year-old contemporaries to score her first stakes victory sugar again is a chestnut daughter of syncline from wolstonita by wagon master bred in pennsylvania by george strawbridge and owned by his augustine stable trained by mcdonald benson and ridden to victory by luis Contreras. sugar again covers the six and a half furlongs in 115.99 Going to head to Redima Park in Oklahoma for a couple of two-year-old stakes on the grass. Coming up next, we'll start with Saturday's One Mile El Joven for two-year-olds, uh, this time the Colts and Geldings. Big scrape in. All set. And runners away in the El Joven. All the way to a good beginning and from the middle of the pack, our boy Bill Waste No Time goes directly after the lead. Rohan Hawk from the inside, settling into stride second at the rail. Prompted on from the outside, big scrape. BG Suavecito moves to join the leaders from between horses. They swing through the turn in the El Hoven. Our boy Bill leads them along by two. BG Suavecito tracking in second by a length. Roadhawk settled in at the hedge, third a length and a quarter. Big scrape next to the outside to Bella's Quest. Unbridled Sheriff mid pack to the outside. Bea Deacons next at the rail. Joined on the outside by Colonel Wright, two to Texas Citizen. Lingering in the back with Landon Paul. They have a half mile to go now in the El Hoven as they run on for the far turn. And our boy Bill and Jeffrey. Sanchez show the way they're opened up by three out front Roadhawk to the inside tracking with BG Suavecito holding third on the outside unbridled sheriff gears up with a run now from the outside Bella's quest is at the inside as they run to the top of the stretch our boy Bill brings them off the turn as they thunder down the stretch in the El Hoven. Our boy Bill at the inside leads the way. Along the outside, Colonel writes in with a late say. Roadhawks at the inside, but our boy Bill and Jeff Sanchez on to victory in the El Hoven.
Our Boy Bill, a horse that uh, won up here at Saratoga, broke his maiden two races back on the grass at Saratoga, then headed to Kentucky Downs where he scored an allowance victory. Here goes to the front and gallops them right into the ground and settles for the four and a quarter length throttle down victory. Colonel Wright completes the order of the uh, the exacta with Roadhawk back in third. Our boy Bill is a bay gelding, a son of peace rules from our loaded pistol by Montbrook, bred in Florida by Richard Averill, owned by Averill Racing Limited and Lou Donato, trained by Wesley Ward and ridden to victory by Jeffrey Sanchez. Our boy Bill covers the mile in 135.34. Next up, two-year-old fillies on the grass in the M2 Technology El Senorita. They run the gate. And runners away in the 16th edition of the M2 Technology La Senorita. And going away, Baby rushes off to a good beginning. Along the inside, floating past you is there. Here goes Tiger Girl, who tugs away at the bit from the outside. They now run three in a line up front as they take it to the turn, a span of three. Back to Patty's Pride with a ground-saving trip to the inside. Jazzy Jesse is matching strides there. Span of three more. Back to Unbridled Image, mid-pack, still two to Blushing Sis. Up from the outside comes Final Wonder. And at the tail of the pack is Little Widowmaker. They straighten up for the back stretch run opening quarter of swift 22 and 4 in the la senorita and it's tiger girl who sets the tone and leads it by two floating past you right behind in second by length jazzy jesse on the outside poised in third then patty's pride continues to run on at the hedge still two and a half back to going away baby followed by unbridled image further back Little Widowmaker, third last on the outside. Blushing Sis and three to Final Wonder. Midway around the turn they come. And Tiger Girl has the lead as they run to the top of the lane. Floating past you is chasing, but off the turn. It's Tiger Girl who leads the charge in the La Senorita. Patty's Pride on the outside chasing. But Tiger Girl going on under Don Symington and they're bounding away. Tiger Girl wins the La Senorita. Tiger Girl won it impressively from Patty's Pride, finishing second. Jazzy Jesse third. Tiger Girl picks up the win. She was second to Jazzy Jesse in the happy ticket last time out at Louisiana Down. She turns the tables on that rival. She did have a little bit of a trappy trip that day, being carried wide. Here she was able to make her own pace, winning by two and three quarters over Patty's Pride. Jazzy Jesse back in third as all of these fillies were in from the happy ticket stakes. Tiger Girl is a two-year-old chestnut daughter of Hold That Tiger from Peking Diablo by Diablo, bred in Louisiana by Israel Flores Horses Limited, owned by the breeder, trained by Tony Ritchie, and ridden to victory by Donald Symington. Tiger Girl covers the mile in a pretty sharp 134.75. We'll head out to the West Coast now for a pair of two-year-old stakes. Saturday at Oak Tree at Hollywood Park, two-year-old males in the Jack Goodman. They're off. Mackenzie's Way wins the break, goes out for the front. Premier Pegasus at the rail away second. Celestic Knight, Road Ready, and Awesome Patriot are in the next flight, then winning Desire, and the trailer is Clubhouse Ride. Mackenzie's Way and Premier Pegasus. These two match strides, and Premier Pegasus puts his neck in front. Mackenzie's Way is second by a length and a quarter from Celestic Knight, who moves out the rail third and now two from the front. Awesome Patriot is midfield in the red. He's got three lengths to make up. Road Ready will be three wide. He's only four off the lead. Clubhouse Ride looks for a spot. And here's Clubhouse Ride tugging between horses. And if he finds a seam, Clubhouse Ride's going to get up into third. But he's in a very tight spot. And the trailer is winning Desire. Top of the stretch in the fourth. Jack Goodman stakes. And here comes Mackenzie's Way outside of Premier Pegasus. Mackenzie's Way, Premier Pegasus. Awesome Patriot's got a chance. He's only a length from the front. Clubhouse Ride needs a way through. Here comes Clubhouse Ride. He's found his seam. Premier Pegasus back in front. Mackenzie's Way tries to go with him. Clubhouse Ride is a length and a half back in third. Premier Pegasus. Mackenzie's Way, Clubhouse Ride, Premier Pegasus. The fourth Jack Goodman stakes goes to Premier Pegasus. He beat Mackenzie's way. 
Close for third, Clubhouse Ride and Celestic Knight. Premier Pegasus picking up the victory, running his record to two for two off of a maiden special weight early at Del Mar. He won on the 24th of July. We didn't get him back to the races in the meantime, and I'm not sure if he had any kind of a setback or if he just uh, was giving this guy time. They bring him back sprinting, and he scores by a length and three quarters over McKenzie's way with the favored clubhouse ride, completing the top three. Premier Pegasus is a dark bayer brown son of Fusaichi Pegasus from Squall Linda by Summer Squall. Bred in Kentucky by Cho Ming Kwan and owned by the breeder. Trained by the owner, breeder, and ridden to victory by Alonzo Quinones. Premier Pegasus covers the six in 109.62. Next up, two-year-old fillies in Sunday's running of the Enochia. They're at the post. They're off. Tails in excess broke well, so did Hanukkah between horses and Gone Rebel in the center. These three fast into stride. Tails in excess puts her head in front. Pleasing Sunrise and Blazing Along out sprinted early. Now the two favorites hook up. Gone Rebel is intent on getting to the lead and Tails in excess and Rosario are going to let her go on. Couldn't keep up and so Tails in excess takes back and angles outside. Gone Rebel clears going into the far turn. She's got a two length lead. Tails in excess is now in second. Blazing Along and Hanukkah third and fourth and about four from the front. Pleasing Sunrise at the back of the pack, five lengths from first to last as they round the far turn in the 34th. Enochia stakes and Gone Rebel is the leader. And now she's aggressive to the quarter pole. Gone Rebel with a two-length lead over Tails in Excess in second. Pleasing Sunrise has just gone from fifth up into third and she's about four from the front. Pleasing Sunrise has a closer's chance. Final furlong they run. Gone Rebel leads. Tails in Excess still in second. Pleasing Sunrise to the outside still three behind. Gone Rebel a 16th out. Gone Rebel is clear. She's still two in front. Tails in excess and pleasing sunrise. Gone Rebel. Tails in excess. Gone Rebel. The 34th Enochia Stakes goes to Gone Rebel. She held off Tails in excess and pleasing sunrise. Blazing along. Finish fourth. Gone Rebel picks up her second career victory, running a record to two for five. She had broken her maiden at Lone Star back in May, and since then her best performance had been a second place finish in Allowance Company in Southern California. Here she comes in off of a poor performance last time out, finishing up the trek in the Del Mar debutante. She rebounds to win by three quarters of a length over the odds on favorite tails in excess with pleasing Sunrise back in third. Gone Rebel is a chestnut daughter of McCabe from Rebel Gal by Honor and Glory. Bred in Louisiana by Jillian Taylor, owned by David and Holly Wilson, trained by Vladimir Sarin and ridden to victory by Pat Valenzuela. Gone Rebel covers the six furlongs in 110.38. We'll pause now for one more brief message and when we return, a very busy Saturday, New York Showcase Day at Belmont. This portion of the program brought to you by Capital Bets. For more information, go to CapitalOTB.com.
Catch the excitement with Capital OTB Online. It's now easier than ever with internet wagering at CapitalOTB.com. Wager online and get track odds, online contests, membership specials, and it's secure and fan-friendly. Whether it's a big stakes day like the Kentucky Derby, Belmont Stakes, Traverse Stakes, Breeders' Cup, or just a great day of racing, wagering online at CapitalOTB.com is always simple and easy. Sign up today at CapitalOTB.com because your chances are better with Capital OTB. Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We will continue now on with Saturday's Belmont Card, a terrific day for the New York Reds. Great racing, terrific conditions, and we'll start things out with three and up sprinting in the Hudson. And they're off and driven by success. Missed the break. He broke last in the field, five lengths away from the rest of them. Disastrous start for Driven by Success. Here is B. Bullish, who's gone on for that early lead. General Maximus is running second early on. Three lengths back, and Endless Circle is now third. Rollers is fourth. Driven by Success, trying to get back in it. And he's forced to go four wide while moving swiftly on the far outside. Rainex Jet is in and among horses, and the trailer is Heavenly Blaze. It was a 22-4 and four opening quarter mile. Three furlongs from the line. General Maximus has rested a narrow lead away from B. Bullish in the circle right there. Third. Rainex Jet is fourth, driven by success. Wide in fifth. And Rollers is sixth at the rail as the field turns for home. And General Maximus is in charge at the top of the stretch. General Maximus in front. B. Bullish continues to battle away, but he's a length behind with less than a furlong to go. And Ray Next Jet has now moved to third. They're followed by Endless Circle and driven by success. Down to the wire, General Maximus. B. Bullish a final run at him, but it is General Maximus, a one-length winner. B. Bullish finishing second. Driven, uh, Ray Next Jet was third and driven by success. Spotted the field five lengths and only got beat by four. General Maximus picks up the victory. This was a horse that right from the start looked like he was going to be a very nice horse. He did try some pretty sh tough company earlier on this year. Last time out was a good third behind Endless Circle and B Bullish in an overnight stake at Belmont Park about oh, about three weeks or so ago. Here he turns the table showing good early speed, dueling it out in the early portion of the race with B Bullish, putting that one away to win by a length and a half. B Bullish, who had finished in front of him last time out, was twice his price at 11 to 1. Rainix Jet completes the order of the top three as the favorite in the field, Endless Circle, never got to the front and was a little bit dull as a result following that. The winner, General Maximus, is a three-year-old chestnut son of Freud from Modern Toughness by Good and Tough. Bred in New York by Jill and Dominique Imperio, owned by Goldmark Farm, Michael Imperio and Elizabeth Loftus, trained by John Terranova and ridden to victory by Javier Castellano. General Maximus covers the 6 in 108.84. We'll continue now with New York Showcase Horses, two-year-old fillies in the Maid of the Mist. And they're off. Sensational ass, or rather sentimental ass, comes up the inside, up and after that lead. Saltamontes is second early on. Queen's Harbor is third, Osable Chasm is fourth. Up East Sider Hustle on through between horses is fifth. Social statement, sixth on the outside, floating alone, was off slowly. Now eighth early on, ready gets gold is now ninth, four lengths back to Hessenite. It's sentimental ass leading the field through a 22 and four opening quarter mile. Queen's Harbor down inside on the outside. Saltamontes looms with a half mile to go. Queen's Harbor is now back into third. Upper East Sider still a busy rod while fourth. Osable Casson to her inside is now fifth. Ready gets gold. Floating alone down inside about eight lengths from the front and punching through an opening on the rail. The half was 46 and four fifth seconds. Solid fractions here. Sentimental ass about to be confronted by Saltamontes as the field turns for home. Saltamontes comes off the turn, going head to head with Sentimental ass. In the meantime, floating alone is now third. One furlong to go. It's still Saltamontes and Sentimental ass. These two are really giving their all here. Sentimental ass and Saltamontes neither giving away. Down to the line. It is Sentimental Lass to prevail. 
Saltamonte is finishing second. Floating alone third. Ready gets gold fourth. Sentimental Lass off a very impressive maiden win last time out by 10 lengths on September 26. Scores the victory by a length over Saltamontes, who had run her record to two for two with a very impressive uh, win last time out down at Belmont. Floating alone at 15 to one, rallies well after a stumbling start to complete the order of the top three. The winner, Sentimental Lass, is a bay daughter of Freud from Scottish Bubbly by Cherokee Run. Bred right here in New York by the Wind Horse Thoroughbreds Limited, owned by the JZB Racing Stable and trained by David Duggan. Ridden to victory by Rajiv Marat, Sentimental Lass covers the 7 124.64. Next up, we'll head on to the turf for three year olds and up in the Mohawk. And they're off. Stutter step start there for Mr. Vegas. Straight story going straight for the lead. Straight story immediately to establish the lead there. And then on the outside, it's Midnight Billy, who's alongside running along in second. Pocket Cowboys is third with Spa City Fever, now fourth on the outside. Good Prospect is fifth by three. Kutis is now six down toward the inside. Pretty Boy Freud's alongside him running in seventh. Uncle T7 is now eighth. Piazza de Spanier ninth. That slow start has put Mr. Vegas at the back of the pack, although Mr. Vegas is still well held about 12 lengths from the lead. And the leader, Straight Story, now being pushed along by Midnight Billy. So no free ride on the lead. Straight Story's got to work for it. 23 and 4 was the opening quarter mile. Midnight Billy pressing hard all the way with five furlongs to go here. Two lengths back, Pocket Cowboys tracks third after a 47 and two half mile. There's a break of six lengths back to Spa City Fever. Another four to good prospect than Pretty Boy Freud, followed by Kutis, Piazza de Spania, Uncle T7, Mr. Vegas is still the trailer as the field rounds the far turn. Straight story now beginning to turn back that challenge of Midnight Billy, but he's been softened up. Three furlongs to go. Straight story, the leader, through a solid three quarters of a mile and one eleven and one. Midnight Billy is now second pocket. Cowboys is third. Another seven back to Spawn City Fever fourth as Straight Story heads for home with the lead. Straight Story driving past the eighth pole. Clear by three lengths now. On the outside, pocket Cowboys. Pocket Cowboys going to run it. Straight Story. Straight Story had to work early. He's got to work late because here comes Pocket Cowboys to overtake him in the shadow of the wire. Pocket Cowboys, the winner. Straight Story finishing second here at six to five. Kutis was third, and it's a three way photo for fourth. Pocket Cowboys picks up the victory. A little bit of an upset as he scores over the favored straight story. Was able to catch him in the late stages to go away to win by a length and a quarter. Straight story holds on for second with Kuteus rallying from well back off the pace. This is a horse that for quite some time really looked like he was going to make a couple of big moves forward. He's been running at Presque Isle this year with some success. Comes in from Presque Isle and scores the third spot here at a big 55 to 1. In fact, finishing in front of the the second choice in here, Uncle T7, who had most recently picked up a victory in the Ashley T. Cole. Pocket Cowboys is a bay gelding, a son of wild event from lots of sprinkles by Thunder Puddles. Bred in New York by Scott M. Schwartz and owned by the breeder, trained by Scott Schwartz and ridden a victory by Edgar Prado. This is a horse that had been running against some of the best of the division, including some of his rivals here, Uncle T7 and Straight Story, over the course of his last pair of races. Scoring on uh, the big day, New York Showcase Day, Pocket Cowboys and Edgar Prado complete the nine furlongs in 148.44. Next up, back to two-year-olds in the state-bred competition in the Sleepy Hollow. And they're off. Brave Warrior Hysterical Cat, Luxury Appeal is there. Bambi Bound there on the far outside. Never Right Joy comes on through in between horses. Then farthest out, it's Bound by Humor. Bandbox is near the back of the pack, already about seven lengths from the lead and then behind horses. And then it's Private Rules and Kriya's Law. Brave Warrior, narrowly, 
Hysterical Cat alongside and on hold. Then uh, on the inside is Luxury Appeal as the field moves after a quarter mile in 23 seconds flat. Bambi Bond is with the leaders on the outside, now running long in third. And then it's Luxury Appeal, now back fourth. Never Right Joey is fifth, being pushed along. Never Right Joey. Bandbox now starting to come alive on the outside. There goes Bandbox making a move. Three furlongs from the wire, and Bandbox is really on a roll now. The half was 46 and four fifth seconds. Brave Warrior and Hysterical Cat, one, two, as they hit the top of the stretch. Bambi Bond is third. Far outside, Sandbox is now fourth. In behind them, it's Luxury Appeal in fifth. Never right, Joey tailing off into sixth. Top of the stretch, Bambi Bound on top. On the outside, Bandbox, Bandbox, Bambi Bound, Bandbox, Bambi Bound, and it is Bandbox. Bandbox in front, Bambi Bound running second, and Kriya's Law, late move on the outside, down toward the rail, Luxury Appeal is coming fast late, but here's the wire, and Bandbox got it by a length. Luxury Appeal second, Kriya's Law third, Never right, Joey fourth. Bandbox picks up the victory. A little bit of a traveling two-year-old state bred. Broke his maiden on the turf at Laurel early in the year. Was given some time off. Came back on September 18th at Charlestown in the Juvenile there with a $100,000 purse. Scored that day. Here gets off to a stumbling start and proved that he can also rally from off the pace after having showed reasonable forward uh, tactical speed in his prior start. Gets the win by a length and a quarter over luxury, luxury appeal with Korea's Law back in the third spot. The winner band box is a two-year-old gray son of Tappet from Empty the Bases by Grand Slam, bred in New York by New Dawn Thoroughbreds and Aaron Yagoda, owned by Hillwood Stable Limited and trained by Rodney Jenkins, ridden to victory by Ramon Dominguez. Band box covers the seven and one twenty-four point three eight. Next up, Phillies and mares sprinting on the main track in the Iroquois. Ready? And they're off. It's a good start for Lovely Lil there on the far outside. Mies Rocks has some early speed. So to Mother Russia, who now moves up to be third. Shine Upon sprinting from the inside. Now fourth, City Broad, fifth on the far outside. Care Corn Fugitive moves through between horses. Now six, Maidina is racing seventh. And Sapphire Sky now drops back into eighth position. And then it's Cody Samora, who's ninth on the outside, followed by 515, a long way back to our Betty Grable, who trails the field. Into the far turn, it was a 22 and two opening quarter mile here by Mies Rocks. Lovely Lil and City Brock running second and third. Down toward the inside, Mother Russia is fourth. Caracorum Fugitive now advancing up to be fifth. Sapphire Sky is four or five wide in sixth. Then down toward the inside at China Pond. Coming from the back of the pack, our Betty Grable's just starting to come alive as the field comes to the top of the stretch. Meese, Rocks, and City Broad head for home together. Shine Upon comes to them on the outside. And Mother Russia fourth. Mine on a fifth with one furlong to go. Meese, Rocks past the eighth pole, opening up on the field here. Meese Rocks spurred on by Ramon Dominguez on their way to a four-length lead here. Our Betty Grable has come from well out of it, but she'll be second on the wire to Meese Rocks, who rolls to a two-length win here in the Iroquois. Our Betty Grable second, followed by Maidana and Mother Russia. The very consistent Mies Rock scores the victory on the front end here over our Betty Grable. She turns the tables on that rival. She was second to her last time out in the Ann Iron. Prior to that, she won the Union Avenue in pretty nice fashion. So up here at Saratoga, been, been very, very consistent throughout the course of this season. My Dinah, another, another very consistent mare, completes the order of the top three. Mies Rocks is a bay mare, a daughter of rock and roll from Mies's Pieces by Grindstone. Bred in New York by Robert W. Misa. Owned by Henry Joseph and Jamie Terranova. Trained by Ned Barker and ridden to victory by Ramon Dominguez. Mies Rocks covers the seven furlongs in 123.64. We'll continue with New York Showcase action in the Empire Classic for three-year-olds and up. They are in the gate.
and they're off. Ichabod Crane, very awkward start, spots the field several lengths. Friend or foe came away in good order, so too is Mantica. On the far outside, Stormy's Majesty is there. Ivy Boye will be forwardly placed as well. Wishful Tomcat angles over to the inside. Rufino comes charging on through between horses up to the neck of Friend or Foe. Friend or Foe, a short lead. Rufino right there, second on the outside. Ivy Boye runs in third. His mate Mantica is fourth. Wishful Tomcat fifth toward the inside. Stormy's Majesty far outside and sixth. Mine over matter is seventh as his stablemate leads the field on the backstretch. Giant Moon is now eighth. Star of New York is ninth and six lengths back to the trailer. Ichabod Crane after that disastrous beginning. They continue this long run down the Belmont backstretch. 23 flat for the opening quarter and the half for friend or foe was 46 and three fifth seconds. The pace is honest. The leader is friend or foe into the far turn here of the Empire Classic. There's a half mile left. On the outside, Rufino still trying to press for that lead. Second, I.B. Boy, three wide, third. Stormy's Majesty, four wide, fourth. Wishful Tomcat, just in behind the lead. Down toward the inside. And Mantica is now running in sixth. And then it's mine over matter. We'll take the overland route into the stretch. Giant Moon coming up the inside. Six lengths from the leader. And the leader is still friend or foe as the field turns for home. Rufino challenging now for that lead on the outside. Wishful Tomcat cat down toward the rail. Mine over matter coming up on the far outside. Giant Moon trying to slice his way through in between horses, but friend or foe kicks away from the Empire Classic field. Friend or foe. An outstanding effort once again. Wins by five. Ichabod Crane was second. Wishful Tomcat was third. It was close for fourth between Rufino and Mantica. Friend or foe gets the victory, rebounding nicely off a sixth place finish in the Travers. This is a horse that uh, had won the Mike Lee, the first leg of the Big Apple Triple, and the uh, Connections decided that they were going to uh, to take a try out of uh, State Bread Company. They ran they ran fourth with this colt in the Jim Dandy in a pretty nice performance. In fact, he was neck and neck with the eventual Travers winner as they crossed the line that day. Came back sixth in the Travers and now rebounds well to be one of a number of very good New York bred three-year-olds to have won this race, including last year's winner Hainesfield, who of course is now a grade one winner. Friend or foe scores the victory on the front end over a deep closer Ichabod Crane, who rallies from last to second at ten and a half to one, actually eleven to one. Wishful Tomcat completes the order of the top three. The winner, friend or foe, is a three-year-old chestnut son of Friends Lake from Unbridled Star by Unbridled. Bred in New York by Chester and Mary Broman, owned by the Breeders, trained by John Kimmel, and ridden to victory by Alex Solis, friend or foe, completes the nine furlongs in 146.94. One more showcase race to bring to you. They've uh, changed the order of things a little bit, and it's three-year-olds and up fillies and mares on the grass in the Ticonderoga to wrap up showcase day. There in the gate. And they're off. Exclusive scheme, Meriwether Jessica, and just to their outside, Crazy Cat Lady. Into the first turn, exclusive scheme. Out for that lead, Meriwether Jessica defers to her, sits back in second. Miss Stiletto is now third. Crazy Cat Lady there on the far outside, now moves to third. Paraiba fourth. Miss Stiletto in between horses and fifth. And Chorus Music is with the leader, sixth. And there's a break of five. Back to Chestoria, now running seventh by Magic Moment is eighth. Alcalina is ninth. And the last of all is You Go West Girl. So down the back stretch run here. And exclusive scheme is the leader. But quickly, there goes Chorus Music now, who is very anxious. Chorus Music moving decisively and moving early for that lead down the back stretch run. On the inside, exclusive steam now second. Meriwether Jessica races in third. And Crazy Cat Lady just outside the lead after a 49 and 3 opening half mile. There's a two and a half length break back. Miss Stiletto now moves up into fifth. Pariba loses his spot back racing sixth. Chestoria seventh. Alcalina is eighth. Hugo West Girl. And My Magic Moment lags behind into the far turn. Chorus music on top with three furlongs remaining. Meriwether Jessica. 
Crazy Cat Lady on the outside, third. Down toward the rail exclusive scheme is fourth. Here comes Miss Stiletto. Here comes Chestoria with a sweeping move there in the far outside. And Parry been down toward the rail. Alkaline is only four lengths away from the lead. And you go West Girl on the far outside. Wide open with one furlong to go. Chorus music. A narrow lead coming into the final furlong. Exclusive scheme down toward the rail. Meriwether Jessica is there. And you go West Girl. You go West girl you go girl indeed wins my two chorus music second exclusive scheme third very close for fourth alkalina or merryweather jessica you go west girl gets the big victory when it counts she had been knocking on the door all year long in races like the Hettinger, the Yaddo, and the Fazig, amongst others, always running very well, rallying from off the pace, this time scoring by two lengths over Chorus Music with exclusive scheme back in the third spot. The winner, You Go West Girl, a dark bear brown mare, a daughter of Mr. Greeley from Careless Heiress by Runaway Groom, was bred in New York by the Gallagher Stud, owned by Craig Burnick and trained by Tom Proctor, ridden to victory by Jose Lascano. You Go West Girl covers the nine furlongs on the Belmont turf in 149.32. That'll wrap up a busy day of racing from Belmont and a busy edition of Horses and Courses. Thank you for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed the program and we'll be able to join us again next week as we take a look at stakes racing action from around the country. Until then, I'm Sheen Wood. Have a great week at the races.